Kale, I want to show some useful modeling techniques that you can use to make much stronger phase movements. It requires a bit of work in CAD, and then you hit phase move, and your slicer does the rest. Let's jump into CAD, and I'll run through it. I'm going to be using one shape, but use whatever you like. Alright, now that we're in CAD, before we do anything else, let's first define a variable. This variable is going to be for our line width. I'm going to set it to 0.4, and it's going to help us define some stuff later. So once we've made that, we can start defining the shape of our container. I'm going to go pretty basic with this one. So let's make a sketch on the top plane. I'm going to put a circle at the origin, and we're going to give that a dimension of 30, and then extrude it up 25. Just to make the shape a little less basic, I'm going to put a chamfer on the bottom edge. There you go, now it looks a bit more like a plant pot. Okay, so make sure you finish refining the shape of your container before going forwards. Now I'm going to show you two methods for achieving multi-walled phase mode. The first one is pretty basic and is how you get two walls. So to do that, all you need to do is use the shell command and click the top face. Now we're going to set the shell thickness to the line width multiplied by 2. And then there's one last step, so let's create a sketch on the bottom surface of the container and then create a rectangle. And let's find the center point of that edge so that the rectangle is centered. Then set this dimension so it's larger than the container. And lastly, set the final dimension to 0.1 millimeters. Then we're going to extrude the sketch and make sure it's set to remove so that it cuts through the container. So now you'll see that this container has a solid bottom and then a cut through the side. Now let's take this into the slicer. Alright, now that you have the model in your slicer, all you have to do is turn on phase mode. In Orca Slicer, this is called Spiral Phase and is found in the Others tab. After I've turned that on, I hit Slice Plate. And you can see that each layer has two rounds. So let's hit print and see what it looks like. As you can see, once it's printed, the filament joins along the seam and makes for a pretty strong joint. Now the second method I'm going to show you is to have two walls with ribs, which will considerably up your part strength. So to do that, first we're going to use the transform tool to create a copy of this part. Then let's hide the copy and use the shell tool on the top surface. Now similar to the previous method, we're going to set this to be line width multiplied by 2. Now let's hide that original and show the copy. And again, pull out the shell tool and use it on the top and bottom surface. And this time set the dimension to the final wall thickness. When you've got that done, show both parts and then start a sketch on the bottom surface of the container. Here again, similar to before, we're going to make a rectangle that's centered and then set this dimension to be larger than the container, and this one to be 0.1 millimeters. Now let's extrude that sketch, set it to remove, and first let's just cut the original, and then do the same thing again on the copy. Once you've got both parts cut, let's make sure the original is hidden, and create a sketch on the front plane that just has a line from the origin straight up. From there, pull out the circular pattern tool, switch to a feature pattern, and select this cut as your feature. And then for the axis, choose that line that you just drew. These cuts are where your ribs will be, so make sure you up your instance count accordingly. I'm going to make mine 5. And then we're almost done. The last thing is just to boolean these two together. And let's drop it into the slicer. Alright, once you've got your part in the slicer, and you've turned on base mode, just hit slice. And as you can see, the model has two walls and the ribs, and each layer does two walls with ribs in one loop. So let's hit print and see what that looks like. As you can see, this part is pretty strong along the ribs, but pretty flexible where there aren't any. You can definitely make this part stronger by adding a top layer or two. Anywho, I hope you found these techniques useful, and please do like and share to tell the algorithms if you want to see more like this. Also, don't forget to subscribe for future videos. You can also join my Patreon for free to get access to raw download files for the models. The Patreon post link includes the models I made by remixing amazing existing designs. Feel free to print them out and test their strength like I'm doing. I especially recommend the egg. Now before you go, check out this video that YouTube thinks you'd like. And have a great day. See you in the next one.